Welcome back to the Spitty Tutorial. We can discuss about the internal organization of semiconductor RAM memories in this video. Semiconductor memories are available in wide range of speeds and their cycle time ranges from 100 nanosecond to less than 10 nanoseconds. Okay, now we can consider the internal organization of uh, memory chips. For the organization of a memory chip, we need word line sensor write circuit and address decoder unit okay all these units are available here in this diagram this is a simple organization representation of a memory chip right here we have different rows and different columns each row represent a memory byte okay and in each row we have different number of cells each memory cell can store a single bit of data like 0 or 1 and this single cells are actually flip flops this flip flop can store a single bit of information and that value is and the value may be 0 or 1 okay so how many rows are available here here total 0 to 15 w0 to w15 15 sorry 16 total rows are available here that means in this memory total 16 different memory bytes are available okay in this particular memory chip total 16 different memory uh, bytes are available and one byte means how many bits eight different bits form a single byte so total eight columns are available that means by fixing a particular row here we have eight different cells okay each row indicate a byte and in each byte we can store eight bit of information that means in single byte we have eight different flip-flop that eight different flip-flop can store eight different bit of information okay so total how many rows are available here total 16 rows are available now we have this address decoder unit this address decoder unit can fix one among this 16 row in order to perform memory access operation like read or write operation and this fixing is based on the uh, address information available as an input to this address decoder unit okay what's the procedure here at uh, here this address decoder unit is provided with four different address bit of information using this four different address information this address decoder can identify two raised to four total 16 different bytes of the memory that means in this memory chip we have a total of 16 different bytes that is why this four bit of address information given as an input to this address a decoder okay using this four bit of address information this address decoder can uniquely address one among these 16 different rows row means one among the 16 different bytes okay so after fixing a particular byte among these total 16 bytes this memory system can perform a memory access operation like read or write so which type of operation we want to perform which is decided by the sensor write circuitry available at the end of each of this column total eight columns are available so eight different sensor write circuitries are also available and this sense actually indicate read and write that means read or write whether to perform read or write operation which is decided by the signal coming through this read or write external signal if a value 1 comes here through this read or write external signal then all these eight sensor write circuitry start a read operation if this value is equal to 0 then this active low signal write bar become active in that case this eight different sensor sensor write circuit start a memory write operation is it clear okay suppose we want to perform a read operation in this memory to the zeroth byte of this memory then what is the procedure 
so here it plays a value 1 in order to perform a read operation the external read bar write signal must be equal to 1 and we need to specify the address of the memory byte and which we want to write so here it plays the value 0 0 0 0 this for 0 0 0 0 0 actually indicate or pointing or fixing the first byte of this memory so using this right line this w0 w1 and w2 up to w15 these are the right line associated with each of these rows of this memory system okay this right signal or right line is connected with each of the flip flop flip flops of a single row similarly w1 connected with all the eight flip flop of this first row Similarly, this W15, this is a right line which is connected with 8 flip-flops of this eight, uh, 15th row. Right. So, here value equal to 1 and address equal to 0, 0, 0, 0. This address decoder fix this particular 8 flip-flops of our first byte. Okay. Then what will happen? Then using this vertical lines, that is each of these flip flop is associated with two vertical lines. Right hand side line and a left hand side line. This left hand, right hand side uh, line indicates, sorry, the complemented form and the left hand side indicate, indicate the original form of the bit. That means, suppose this B7 equal to 1, then this is 0. Okay, why this two line is needed here? Because a single flip flop can store a single bit of information and the value of that single information may be 0 or 1. If you want to store a 0 here, then we can take the value from this right hand side line. If you want to take a value or if you want to store a value 1 here, then we can take value from this left hand side circuit right similarly here if we were to store a 1 here then we can take value from this left hand side circuit if you want to store a 0 here then we can take value from this right hand side circuit that is the usage of this two separate circuitry two separate vertical circuitry connected with this sense and write circuit with the column flip flops column wise which is connected with each of the flip flops in this circuit okay now the same once again we want to perform a read operation from the zeroth byte of this memory chip okay so here we need to uh, set the value 1 and the address is like 0 0 0 0 then this right line fixes these 8 flip flop of our first row 0 to row okay we want to perform a read operation then what will happen this particular lines using this left and right vertical lines associated with each of this flip flop we can take the value through the circuitry to the sense or right circuitry of each of this column we can take either through this or this we can take this value to this particular circuitry and similarly from here also using these or this circuitry we can take the value from this particular flip flop to this particular sensor right circuit similarly from this particular flip flop we can take the value through this line or this line to this particular sensor right circuitry right so we want to perform a read operation memory read operation from take the value from the memory to the external that means from this sensor right circuitry we can pass the value to the external bit lines b0 b1 up to b7 this is the case of a memory read operation in this particular organization suppose we want to perform a write operation what is the uh, operation what are the steps required set here the value 0 then this active low signal write become active and also we want to specify the data to be written onto the particular byte of our memory so the data we need to set here on each of the each of these 
bits from B0 to B7. So these values are taken bitwise to this corresponding sensor write circuitry. Right? And also we want to specify the memory byte address using this for address space. Suppose we want to write data to the first byte of our memory. So here the address is like 0001. Right? And the data, the uh, data to be written onto this uh, first byte is available here in this bits B0, B1 up to B7. So these values are taken by this corresponding sense or right circuitry first. Then using this left and right vertical circuitry, we can pass this data upward to the corresponding memory word or memory byte. So this particular based on this particular address information, this address decoder can now fix this particular row of our memory. Because the address is like 0001 that indicate the first byte of our memory that is this particular bytes. So this right line W1 fixes all of these 8 flip flops of our first byte. Then after fixing these 8 bytes of the first byte this sensor write circuitry can transfer the uh, data taken from this external bit line. We can transfer this data upward to the corresponding flip-flops. From each of these sensor write circuitry, they can transfer the taken data vertically upward to this corresponding flip-flop through different ways. We can use this line or T circuit. Okay, so this is about the memory write operation. Now Consider another case that is we need to configure a uh, memory circuit or we need to organize a memory circuit that has a total of 1k memory cells. 1k means total 1024 memory cells are provided. We need to organize such a memory efficiently. Okay, so before that we can consider one more point here. How many external connections are uh, used here? How many external connections are needed here in order to organize such a memory system? Here we need for external address information. And here we need 8 bit lines in order to transfer data to the external or in order to take data from the external. 8 bits data lines are needed here. 8 plus 4, 12. And two external lines one is for read or write command another is for chip selection why this chip selection is used here because in a normal system we have two or more number of such similar memory chips are provided inside a system similar two or three memory chips are provided in our system in order to fix one chip among the available two or three chips we need to select one among these two or three chips. We can use this chip selection pin. Okay. Normally a system is provided with two or three similar memory chips. And this chip selection pin is used for selecting one among them for memory access operation. So total how many external lines are provided here? 8 plus 4 plus 2. Total 14 external connections are used here. Okay. Now we are going to uh, configure a more uh, somewhat larger memory circuit here. With total 1024 memory cells. In our previous case we are provided with only 128 different memory cells. And is organized as 16 different rows. And in each row we can store 8 different cells. So here 1k memory cells are provided. How can we arrange? One method is 128 by 8 memory organization. 128 by 8 means total 120 rows. 128 rows. And in each row we can store 8 different cells. That means 8 different flip flops are arranged in each of this row. Okay. Total 128 rows are available and total 8 columns. 
that indicate 128 into 8, 1024 memory cells. This one is a particular organization. But the problem is how many uh, external connections are used here? Uh, one is for uh, read or write signal, another is for chip selection, 2. And how many address informations are needed? 128 means 2 raised to 7. 7 address informations are available. And how many external bit lines are needed? There are 8 columns provided here. So, 8 bit lines are needed. 8 plus 2 plus 7. It's total 17 external connection. Uh, along with these 17 connection, we need a ground connection with a voltage connection. Total 19 external connections are needed here. Okay, so here also in our previous example also, along with this 14 external connection, we need to provide one voltage connection and a ground connection. Total 15 connection. And this particular organization of 128 by 8 memory system for the given 1024 memory cells, in this particular organization of 128 by 8, we need total 19 external connection. What are they? 7 bit of address information, 8 external bit lines and 2 for ground and power supply and 2 for read or write and chip selection. Total 19 external connection. So now we can consider one more configuration for the same set of memory cells. That is 1K by 1 memory system. Okay, so what is the advantage of this particular configuration for the same set of memory cells? Here the configuration is 1K by 1. That means total 1K rows and a single column. 1K means total 1024 different rows and a single column. In this particular configuration, how many external connections are needed? Total one uh, thousand twenty four means total two raised to ten, which is equal to thousand twenty four. So ten address informations are needed to identify each of these thousand twenty four rows uniquely. So ten bit address information is needed. Plus two one is uh, two external connection for ground and supply. Ten plus two twelve. Next one output external bit line. Okay, so 13 and another 2 for read or write command and another for chip selection. So total 15 external connection. Using 15 external connection, we can implement this 1K by 1 memory organization for the given set of 1024 memory cells. Okay, so this particular configuration is more efficient than this particular configuration for this 1024 memory cells. Because here this configuration 128 by 8 memory configuration for the given 1024 memory cells, it takes total of 19 external connection. And in this particular configuration of 1K by 1, 1024 by 1 memory configuration, it takes total 15 external connection. Here we can reduce for external connection. So, now we can consider the diagrammatic representation for this 1K by 1 memory chip organization. Total 10 address lines are used and this 10 address lines are divided into 5 bit row address and 5 bit column address. Okay. And this 5 bit row using this 5 bit row and 5 bit row column address we can configure a 32 by 32 memory cell array. Right. Using this 5 bit, we can address total how many rows? 2 raised to 5, 32 rows. And using the 5 bit column address, how many column we can represent? 2 raised to uh, 5, 32 columns. Okay. So, output from these 32 different columns, which is taken inside an multiplexer unit. Okay. In case of memory read operation and this out and this 32 bit column values are taken into an output multiplexer in case of an input uh, uh, in input operation or memory write operation. Okay, once more this 
32 column values are taken to a multiplexer or demultiplexer unit. A 32 by 1 multiplexer or demultiplexer unit. Why? Because here we have only single external bit line. This is the configuration 1K by 1. Total 1K rows and single output or input line. Okay. So, for that here we can split the 10 bit address into 10 bit rows and 10 bit columns. Sorry, 5 bit rows and 5 bit columns. Total 10 bit address is divided into 5 bit row address and 5 bit column address. Right. Using this 5 bit rows we can uh, specify 32 rows and using the 5 bit column address we can specify 32 different columns. This 32 different column values are connected to this 32 by 1 output multiplexer or input demultiplexer based on the type of operation read or write. Okay. So, in case of a write operation, what we want to perform, this data is taken from a single bit external, li uh, external line and is distributed or deplexed into this uh, 32 different columns and is transferred to a corresponding selected row. Okay. In case of a memory read operation, what we want to perform? We want to select values from these 32 different columns of a particular fixed row which is transferred to a single bit output line. This is the case of memory read operation and in case of memory write operation, the single bit of value taken from this external line is distributed among 32 different flip flop of a selected row. And in case of a memory read operation, the values taken from a fixed row, the 32 bit of information taken from a fixed row is transferred to this particular uh, multiplexer unit and among these 32 different flip-flop values, one among them is selected as an output value. Okay, so this is the meaning of this or this is the working of this particular 1K by 1 memory chip organization. Okay, thank you.